All right, guys, welcome back. We have in front of us the first bracket of eight crews, eight crews from the one producer. I think you have to really go to Barbaresco and Productory to come up with another line yes, of cruises. Yes, of course, big. yeah. Um, but these two crews we're looking at are Rivera and Montevideo, and yeah. they could be further apart. From further each apart. Other in Barolo. And 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 I guess they couldn't be more interesting because they really are. They've they've come into our consciousness, uh, you know, Barolo people, Barolo yeah. nuts in <coughs> only uh, the last few years. Yeah. Uh, made more famous by you know producers like Vira and Vietti mm. um, buying in in there in relatively recent times yeah. and elevating two of the of the lesser communes of the 11 villages of Barolo um, elevating their, their these most famous wines to division 1 status yeah, you yeah. know in other words names like Rivera and Monvillero are now you know, suitable to sit in the Division One along with names yep. like Canubi, yep. uh, Rocca di Castiglione, Valero, Mon Privato, uh, Brunate, yep. uh, Vigna Rionda. Yep. Um, yeah, I know. I think we've collector. certainly seen that uh, over, the, particularly over the last decade, that uh, that that shift has well and truly occurred, particularly with Rivera, where there's perhaps been a few more people come into it and, and expose it a bit more. But uh, we've got to remind you that there's two Riveras in Barolo. Uh, the Italians don't like to keep things simple. There's two of lots of different things in uh, in, in Barolo. So there's um, Rivera, Rivera di from, Montfort. Yep, yeah, and Rivera from Novello. Novello, yeah. And uh, so this is Rivera from Novello. And when you when you're looking at the Barolo map, which will uh, will we'll flash up on the screen for you, uh, we're talking in the southwest. Corner, corner yep. of Barolo. So below Barolo Village, another another five or six k's below yep. Barolo Village. So it's the southernmost part of Barolo yep. Yep. versus Monvillero from the northernmost part. And yep. and the wines could not be more different, yep. bearing in mind that they're made as identically yep. as you could imagine. Yep. Um, and 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 it goes to show you the how how shorter distance you have to traverse to make a, a huge difference yeah. in the wine, and that's fifteen k's. Yeah. And uh, you know, a lot of people would say, "Oh, you know, you, you have to have a few cakes. You really, you need ten meters to make." A oh, absolutely! In the wine. Um, but you get there's there's cakes. two coming up. There's two coming up a bit later on where you know you you, you could chuck a cricket ball from from one, one to the other, the other yeah. more, more or less. Yeah, yeah. So um, I'd have to go and jump the fence, pick it up, and throw it again. But you get you get the drift. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's not too far. Um, maybe we'll get Brett Lee over there. Um, so tell me, um, Rivera. Yeah. Rivera for you, you know, the top three or five things that, you know, really yeah. stand out Yeah, it's, it, it's very definitely, uh, there are two styles of Barolo here, the two, almost the two schools. Yeah. Uh, um, Rivera is all red fruits. If you could draw it, it's generally speaking red fruits along the cherry style of, say, Dolcetto. It's 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 like a it's like a classy dolcetto in some ways because it's relatively it's not a complex wine but it's a it's a wine of lushness and force. Um, this was the one wine I mentioned earlier on. I wondered whether it's got the you know it hasn't got the structure or that or so much of that um, brick dust. Uh, mm -hmm. That's a Hill and Hook original a brick yep. dust finish. Yep. Um, it's it's got so much fruit overhanging it this year. People, get, pe you know, people are going to just love the lushness of its fruit. But I've seen great vintages so many times that you know people query whether it's got enough acid. That's got acid, but f there's lush, yep. luscious fruit. Yep. Yep. It's red fruits. Monvillero is is a is the absolute contrast in in. Um, uh, in the style, it, it's more the dark things. You know, it's more the slightly smoky. Mm. It's graphite. If there's any fruit in, you know, any fruit characteristic in there, it's some sort of cherry, very dark cherry. Mm. Um, but it's a very complex wine. Mm. It, it, it's not complex as complex as a couple of wines we'll see down the track. But it's there's a reason this is this is almost called the winemaker's Barolo because it it does something of everything that Barolo does well mm -hmm. and yet it's quite approachable from an early age because the tannins aren't that no noticeable. It's almost Barolo by committee to me. It's got it's just so beautifully put together. This is wow. one of the outstanding wines of, of, of the lineup of, you know in my tasting last Look, week. I'm just thinking about these wines as they came through this there is a, a, a lot to think about. Um, you, you've had the good fortune of seeing them several times. This is my first time and I, I am uh, I'm getting blown away. Comparatively, 
I, I can see exactly again what you're talking about with Rivera with that with those lovely lovely fruits. They they're a bit darker this year than 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 last year, and and that wow depth and length of fruit, incredible. I think those those tannins are there, but as you say, there's just so much fruit. Yeah, yeah. As, and fruit in Barolo context, we're not talking about Barossa Shiraz context. We're talking about in terms of a, a Barolo, there's 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 a bucket load of fruit. I even actually, a even an orange element this year, you know, orange yeah. is a characteristic I get in in Rhone, uh, particularly Gigondas, yeah, yeah. and I and I love it. And yeah. this, so whereas this this is normally so, all red things, it's got a little bit of orange. Thing. It's probably in a mass tasting, you'd, you'd almost go Barbaresco, yeah, 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 yeah. or Roero rather than yeah, Barolo. Yeah. So yeah. It's, a, it's a little atypical in that sense, but. It, it has a firm yeah, finish. And there are a few, few sort of savoury edges in there too. It's sort of that, that, that yeah, yeah, sort of going down that. I don't usually like using primary descriptors a lot, but blood orangey. Is yeah, a, oh, absolutely. It's more than just a, you know, a, a, a basic orange. There's, there's, you know, blood oranges have got that beautiful acidity to them and that extra depth and length of flavour, and that's what's coming through in, in, again, in this for me. But I think blood, it, a sanguine, it is, it is red. You know, it, I'll tell you what it does. It makes me, I always think uh, when I'm looking at a, a wines like this, I always, uh, a little piece of the, the noggin is thinking, now what would I have for dins? <laughs> and, and a piece of tuna, undercooked, you know, a, a, a red fish. Kill it. Just uh, a little bit of fat in the tuna. Yeah, and the grip of the, uh, you know, the grip of, of iodine, I suppose. Yeah. You know, yep. that's, um, that's, that's for something red. Look, if you do end up getting a set of these and you're going through and sort of following through in some of the brackets that we're doing, think about some of these different things. Um, you know, you, don't, you, you take it as far as you want, you know, but... Particularly the textures are, are, are a big thing for me, you know, Nebbiolo, a lot of Nebbiolo is about texture and there's two very different textures here. You do, you do get that sort of that brick dust front mid palette with the Rivera and, uh, and, and, and I think last year you called it that love heart factor where it's got yeah. that generosity up front and then it tapers down. And I sort of mean that from a visual point of view too, that mm. I would love to engage a, an art student you know, to paint these, yeah, you know, yeah, to, yeah, to yeah. do them with hot, um, you know, light show or, you know, yep. on canvas, yep. because this would be sort of a heart shape. But this year, yep. there's stuff dripping over the edge. There definitely is. It's, a lot of flavor. it's not tapering as much. It's, there's, there's like a big, powerful, I don't know, yeah. it's a lollipop. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I know we talk some, we, we talk some, some, some stuff at times, but you know, this is not textbook stuff in in many no. ways. Like, Europeans don't use so many descriptors, but you know, I, I'm like Paul. I can't help it. You know, yeah, I yeah. need to I need to relate it to smells from the kitchen and the the garden and the and the outback and all you know the bush and all that sort of stuff. I need to relate it to smells that uh, that I know. There's so many things again in that Montpellero. I think uh, I think I think what we're seeing overall is an increase in the in the complexity in the 16s overall. Yeah, the, the volume. Alone. And geez, you know, yeah, everything's everything's turned up a, a notch, but but there is that sort of slakiness and flintiness in that in that Mont I, yeah. I love the tannins have, have, have got a little bit more length um, to them, and and uh, this is this is actually not about trying to find the best Barolo. This is more about just celebrating the difference and pointing them out, and just as you know, take it as as you will, and and just. You know, if there's something you enjoy more, frankly, I just happily knock both back and. Uh, oh yeah, there's there's so yeah. many different styles we see we'll see in this lineup alone. Yeah. I, I wouldn't yeah. know who's. I know I've got favourites that yeah. change almost almost by the day. You know, mm. I've got a couple that I, a couple of areas or a couple of the communes I come back to, but but I completely understand if someone you know Rivera is the bee's knees to people because they want they want that Monvillero is the complete contrast. That has just got that faint. Um, a faint edge of that 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 great mark character as well, um, mm. and, and I, I quite like I quite like it. It's it's in there nicely. It's sort of a, a masterpiece kind of character uh, that you would get. That's my, that's what I call sappiness. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I, we had this discussion a couple of days ago um, where they thought I, the sappiness that I refer to it's a burgundy character, mm. like a thing you see in in, to, in better burgundy. People thought, do you mean do you mean like that pine resin sap? No, no, no. Mm. It, to me, it's it's the, you. Call call it mark character to me it's the skins cherry skin or grape skin yeah 
And, and the one grape that, sm that, that always smells like it automatically to me is Torriga Nacional. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. or, or Portuguese tawny port smell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's, yeah. that's the smell that well, I get. That, that, that macerated character that um, for me is also, can be a little bit flinty, can be a little bit like violets. Um, in, in ferment, it can come across a little bit pencil shaving. Right. For me. Um, Which you then, get from whole bunch uh, uh, sometimes. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you do get that. A lot of, a lot yeah, of Pinot yeah. makers use it to, to, to beef up mm -hmm. um, aromatics. <laughs> in some ways it's funny because the, the, there is a little bit of tannin in there that if you ask me I would say maybe that is a, just an edge of a whole bunch but um, we, 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 we'll, we'll have to give the big man a, yeah, a, a head I up don't and think say so. what you want. <laughs> but, but, but it's, 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 it's nothing avert but look I've got to say again what we're seeing in here is depth, length, um, uh, we're seeing great balance, great harmony. These wines are incredibly expressive as young wines, but you can see they've got the legs on them. Yep. There's a real, oh yeah, decades, a real push decades. up and energy to these wines. Yeah, I'm just, I'm loving the the vitality that I'm that I'm seeing, and uh, again, just celebrating the differences, yeah. flavors. And the you know, notes. compared to the last, you know, to a previous great vintage, say the thir thir 13s, the 13s are still drying. You know, they, they, it's a great, it's nearly a great vintage. But they're dry. This is this uh, this is a vintage. I mean, if 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 we drank a couple of these for dinner tonight, you know, we'd be in heaven. They they are usable. It's really yeah, remarkable. Yeah, yeah. I prefer to see eight to twelve years on them. Yeah, they'll yeah. go forty. I've got no doubt at all about it. Yeah, about yeah. that. But I yeah. prefer to see you, you eight and I to twelve. About that because I, I I prefer to knock them on the head because I've had I've had too many at, at thirty years and that have been a bit. Like I know what you mean. It's it's down to bottles, individual bottles by that. Yeah, stage. and I, well, and I would I would love to see these in, at least in the next phase because um, you would you you know yeah you get fantastic enjoyment out of them now. But if you move to the next phase when there's just this extra little bit of resolution and these wines are actually quite resolved already yeah. They're, yeah. they're quite together already but just that extra little bit that layering in of some of those uh, more more developed characters from bottle age characters um, and, and 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 I think you get some some sort of generosity I mean they're, they're generous wine but you get this sort of uh, almost avert generosity coming yeah. through well they do build and, don't they? they build yeah like like a good Pinot, these these things build colour and power in the bottle. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, well look, I would say we would we would have to reclassify them as being playful on the cusp of shifting to <laughs> another classification where there's there's something just a, a, a bit more serious uh, in moving this up year. a division. Yeah, yeah. They um yeah. two spe two special wines. Um, Rivera and Monvillero. Yeah, yeah, and and one from the extreme south and one from the extreme north. That's um, look, cracking set uh, again. Great comparison to try them in a mini vertical as well. Beauty. Try those two, fifteens and sixteens. Well, there you go. Wow. Thanks, David. We're going to reset for a bracket of four this time. Last last year it was three. David's giving me the hot tip. We're going to do it as a bracket of four. Um, Come back and join us for Villero, uh, Montevivato, Rocchi di Castiglioni, and Perusi. The four crews from Castiglioni, Paletto. Paletto. Cheers. <laughs>